We hope you enjoy today's message on Acts chapter 2 verse 38 preaching channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit the bell to help us grow. Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy, and with him there is abundant redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. That was written hundreds of years before Christ came. He called him hope. Hope is something like, I hope it's a sunny afternoon, or I hope my car lasts longer than the payments last, or I hope my, my co-workers like me, or that it's not going to rain today. There are many things for which an individual can hope. This psalm is called a psalm of ascent, and it was to be sung by the children of Israel when they were on their way to Jerusalem to get ready to offer sacrifice and worship. The prophet king, David, is the author of this. Jerusalem was the last city in Canaan to be conquered. It laid unconquered, clear through the time of the judges, into the time of king, the kings, and it was David that went to Jerusalem and defeated Jerusalem. He was the conquering king, and it became the capital city, his capital city, or the city of peace. It was where David would bring the Ark of the Covenant, which represented the presence of the Lord. That's where we read about him offering the sacrifices, going six paces, worshiping, offering the sacrifice, going six paces, and worshiping, and getting criticism from his wife, Michael, for worshiping God. But he was traveling toward the city of God. It was intended that every worshiper would sing this song. So the families would walk along the road from whatever part of Israel they were coming from, singing these words. These words were about approaching the house of God. The song starts dark. It starts with words of depression and fear. And this is likely the place that you and I were at before we found Christ. And perhaps you felt some of this in the last week or so. I'm reading now from verse 1 of Psalm 30, 130. Out of the depths have I cried to you, O Lord. He, Lord, hear my prayer. Hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, should mark my iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word do I hope. I do hope. My soul awaits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. We are all witnesses of the great need of mankind for salvation. Some of the dark things that have happened even in our city of protest and rioting and violence, I believe are a cry for meaning. They are a cry for hope and a cry for peace. And you and I have found that peace in the Lord Jesus Christ. For some of you in this house, it was long ago that you felt these feelings and you prayed a prayer similar to this. But perhaps there are a few of you that are still crying out for hope. You're looking at the politics, the economics, uh, whatever's going on in your life and you say, I need hope. David equated waiting for the hope as waiting for the morning. Perhaps he was speaking like waiting for the morning as a watchman on the wall. And he's looking to make sure there are not intruders coming in the night. And when the morning comes, he can relax and go back to his home. Or perhaps uh, you're lost in the woods and it's night and you don't want to be attacked by some wild animal because you watch too many YouTube uh, presentations. Uh, and so you're staying awake, waiting for the light. Or maybe you're just waiting to, for hope to arise in your heart. In fact, David says his longing was more intense than this. He was hoping for a Savior. And by historical records, the people of God would wait approximately a thousand years more before the Savior would arise. Hope was still living during that time. Hope is not something that is the end, but hope is in the waiting for something that is yet to come. Nearly every prophet expressed the same hope 
as David expressed. And when the last book of the Old Testament was written, we find the prophet quoting God in Malachi 3 and 1. Look, I'm sending my messenger. He will prepare the way before me. Then the Lord who you are seeking will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you look for so eagerly is surely coming, says the Lord God Almighty. So very end. But now there's 400 years to go. But hope was living. Sometimes hope waits in silence. It's something that is in the back of our thinking. It's something that's deep in our heart. We may not express it even to those that are very near to us and maybe don't even verbalize it aloud to God, but occasionally. So it would be 400 years before the waiting would be rewarded. Even though it would be 400 years, everything would be all right because God was in control of the timeline. I have good news for us. No matter what's going on globally or locally, God is in control of the timeline. The scripture says he knows the end from the beginning. That doesn't mean he knows the difference between the beginning and the end, but from the beginning he knew the end. And we know that it is an end of hope. It is an end of righteousness. It is an end of joy. It was eight days after the birth of Jesus uh, that a man called Simeon, a holy man, would make the following declaration in Luke 2 and 29. Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to to your word. And verse 30 of Luke says, For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. So a child promised would be born in simplicity. He would live in obscurity and sometimes in exile and make few public appearances at his childhood. Only two are recorded in the scripture. But it does say he grew in favor with God, and he grew in favor with man. And approximately 30 years later, finally, the waiting would be over, and the declaration would be made. It's kind of like you and I as young kids waiting for our birthday. All I have to do is say, how long is your birthday? Is it 16 days? And if it's 15, I'm letting know by my grandkids it's only 15 days. Because there's a timeline, but we don't know God's timeline. We don't know exactly when he's coming again. They didn't know when he was coming the first time. But when Simeon saw the Christ child, he said in John 1 and 29, or, or he declared the light, but then when John saw the Christ as an adult, he said this in John 1, 29. Look, there is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The waiting had been over, and it had been rewarded, and the Savior had come. Now, here's the thing about the hope is a few months later or a few weeks later, John the baptizer is in prison for his preaching and baptizing, and he has to ask his disciples to go and ask Jesus if he really is the Messiah. Sometimes hope appears, and we recognize it, and then we doubt it a little bit later. If you're doubting that Jesus is the hope of the world, it's time to step up and believe once again that Jesus is the hope of the world. He's the hope of the ages. He's the hope for you and for me. The Apostle Paul penned it this way in Romans 8 and 3. The law of Moses could not save us because of our sinful nature, but God put into effect a different plan to save us. He sent his own son in a human body like ours, except that ours are sinful. God destroyed sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. It doesn't just say he forgave our sins, but he destroyed our sins. That's hope. When God just destroys it, wipes away and clears our sin. I read to you again out of Psalm 130 and verse number 8. 
He himself will free Israel from every kind of sin. So wherever you categorize your sin, wherever you put your violation of God's law, it's irrelevant because he has forgiven every sin. Hope is real. And Romans 5 and 5 tells us how that hope is revealed in our lives and kept alive in our lives. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So the waiting's over because the Holy Spirit has been poured out. The waiting is over for us who have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But in this season, I encourage you to keep hope alive. Keep the Holy Spirit alive in your life. Let Him speak through you. Let Him breathe through you. Let Him love through you. Let Him care through you. And as we conclude our worship today, I ask that you all just worship with with us, stand, sing, raise your hands, praise God, because hope has come down.